These items sell for us all the time. There is no good season or bad season. It's just continuous across the board. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to look at some items that we always sell. If you go back to videos of ours from three years ago, you're going to see the same types of things. They don't die off. There is no slow season. There's no winter better selling months. All year round, these are collected. These are items that collectors want, and they buy them regardless of any other factors. They're also items that are extra money for somebody. They have to have expendable money to buy these. These are things that no one in their right mind actually needs, but rather wants and collects. So the first item here is a 35 millimeter uh, slide. It's something I had in a big assortment that we purchased for just a couple dollars. It turned out to be from Hong Kong, China, and that is why it sold for almost $34 plus shipping. It was on sale, so originally, obviously, you see here, $37.50, but we did take an offer, so it was around $34 and end of day on this one here. Now, here's a postcard. Now, this one's been up for a little while. We sold this one for $50. Um, it was a counter offer to a $62.51. We just send offers out. They take them, they take them. If not, oh well. But this one did result in a counter. Now, this one was purchased with a whole bunch of other postcards. I mean, a whole mass, three, 400 of them, all real picture, real photo postcards, all related to the same topic. Now, this purchase alone has probably made us around $1,200 or so right this moment. A few of the cards sold in the 100 plus range on their own. So, phenomenal purchase here, phenomenal sale as well. Now, I do love records. This is one I've sold. I still have another one of these available right this second. Keep the home fires burning. Now, this is a one-sider. The back side does not have any grooves or anything else on it. This is a World War I song. John McCormick, he very famous for the time frame. This one routinely sells for anywhere from $20 to, say, $24.50, $25. We got $24.15 on this one, plus shipping. Now, Raiders of the Lost Ark is pretty hot. This one did sell for what you see. This has been up for a little while. It's been opened. It's been played. It's not in mint condition, but it's a very nice copy. Every one of these I've ever bought has sold. I never keep them in stock more than a few months, if even that long. I'm fine with $14.50. Usually these are a dollar or 50 cent purchases like this one here. Now Merv Griffin, you should know the name I would hope, but Merv Griffin has some very famous, well-known, well-collected rockabilly, bopper, popcorn style music here. This is Hey Pretty Baby. Uh, it did sell for $30 plus shipping on this one doesn't show up very often this was a quarter purchase from a bulk lot of records here's jimmy curtis here's another this is a teen one this is a promo copy it's a white label promo the simple things is the song without you is on the back did sell for 30 bucks as well this is another one of those quarter or less purchases we many times can get hundreds of 45s for just a few dollars, especially without sleeves if they're just thrown in an old dirty box. Many times I can buy three or four hundred for five or ten bucks. Now, it's hit or miss sometimes with them too, so you've got to be careful. You've got to know a little something about the records. At the very least, you need to know how to look them up properly and which sites give you the best information like Pop PopPsych, Discogs, eBay, or Amazon. All of those places are places we use to sell records. Now, labels I sell very, very routinely. This one did sell for what you see at $34.50, Qantas. Now, this is an earlier one. I have not seen this one before. It's a nice-looking one. It has a prop-driven plane, so it has propellers, props. This one is an early one for sure, so I would date that to the way it states in the listing. It did sell, as you see here, as I said, for $34.50. Now, I do love trade cards, especially with anthropomorphic items on it, like this globe here dressed up with a globe shirt on. 
This is for the Globe shirt, and they're both wearing one as well. During the same time frame, the Cleopatra obelisk was, I believe, being transported across the sea. Uh, there was many obelisks over here, including the Washington Monument. So it was a hot topic back in those days. This one did sell for $45. It's been up for a little while, but I am not concerned with how long it takes just because we have quantity up. Now this one's been up for a little while as well. This is one of those that you just don't run into very often. This one I sold to someone who has bought from us many, many times for 300 bucks. It was the most they spent on a card, they told me, but they really had to have this one here. Rather interesting, rather unique. Price-wise, it, it just depends on who's on at any given time for there to be enough interest for something to sell for some high dollar. Now, I could have probably held on to this for a little longer, maybe got 50, 100 bucks more. But I'm not concerned about selling everything for the top dollar I can. People who buy from us know that they can get a bargain. So that is a big plus to get a lot more people coming back. Now, once someone makes that first good purchase from us, they do come back. And that is the biggest key factor. Keep them coming back. Consider counter offers. Consider the ability to place offers to begin with. I know some people do not like to do best offer, but I have great results with best offer. Most of our items have sold through best offer. I'm always talking about labels of all sorts, just like the uh, luggage label we showed you from Qantas. Now, this is a label that you'd find plastered on a roller skating carrying case. It's usually what you see these at. It did sell for the full price, $34.50. I sell quite a few of these. Five to seven a week of these sell pretty much every single week. So on average, almost one every single day of the year. So they sell very well. They sell for decent prices. They're not super, super uh, rare, but they are scarce. Most people use these and stuck these down on something. So when they do turn up like this, we are able to get some really good money out of them. Now, I sell a lot of posters quite often. This is Hell or High Water, and I've talked about this one before. Now, we picked up these hundreds and hundreds of vintage posters from a record store and that is what this is from it must have been advertising the soundtrack itself this one went for 26 dollars and some odd cents plus they paid shipping so they have over 30 dollars into getting this sent to them they sell extremely well we bought again a mass quantity of these i bought it by the pound to be honest with you i bought 50 uh, 50 pounds one time and i came back and bought another 100 pounds of it just a couple of these have paid for the entire purchase. So at this point, this was all profit. Now, I love old Christmas ornaments, and that's what this is. This is a Victorian Christmas ornament. This one looks to be handmade. The company that made this is a well-known printer. So I would say this was made by someone just to hang on the tree. It's mounted on a board or a thick piece of cardboard on the back. It has some cord attached to the, to the back. It's been glued together. It has some string tying the ends together so they make that little loop. This one did sell for almost 40 bucks, 39 and some change. This person also bought a second piece for around 40 bucks. So all told, we almost made 70 bucks off of this one person. Now, lithographs I've been selling for quite some time, years. I always have lithographs in-house. If I see a nice stack of them, I usually pick them up. The ones that do the best are pre-1860. The ones you want to are the ones that have someone famous in it. Someone's going to frame this piece here. No problem with the price. It did sell for 30 bucks plus shipping. This was paid for probably two years ago. I bought a large assortment of these actually while we were on vacation in an island somewhere out in the middle of Lake Erie. It was a great purchase for 12 bucks. One item paid for the entire purchase and we made a profit off of that. Now we've sold probably an extra dozen or more and made several hundred dollars off of this one oddball purchase. Now I'm not a sports card collector or seller, but I do run across some Victorian ones like this one here. This is titled a Daisy Cutter. I'm not really sure or up on what that would mean. This is a right fielder is what it's stated as on the card. So maybe he got a fastball slammed at him. I'm not really sure. But regardless, it did sell for almost 80 bucks, I do believe, on this one plus shipping. Now, this one has no advertising on it. Had it had advertising on it, it would have been worth far more. Some of these cards will have like a schedule of ball games for certain areas on the back. 
those would have been worth even more. Now, this comes from a set. There's at least four different versions of baseball player cards that came with this set here. Some of these sets have six different ones or even more. Most all of these, though, regardless of advertisements or not, will be collected and do sell fairly regularly. I just throw a price up. You never know on some of these. It just, again, takes the right person online at the right time for something like this to sell. Now, I do a lot in buttons. I've been selling buttons for years, 25 plus years. Uh, we've got a massive assortment that at this point was completely and utterly free. This came from that assortment. This one sold for just under 70 bucks, $68, I think, at 50 cents is what this sold for. Plus, they paid for shipping. Now, this is tied to a Scottish clan. It's got the crest on it and the whole works. These take some time to identify, so even if you think you've made a score on some of these, the time invested to figure out what some of these are without the proper research tools can really sink you on some of these. But if you've got the right books, the right resources, these can be a piece of cake and make you a ton of money. Now, the last item here is a very unique item. This is a city police from the Vatican City. This button was made in France. This is what the police... The, the security forces of the Vatican City would have worn back in the day. This is an early button. You can see the Paris back mark on it. Um, Date-wise, I'm not 100% sure because they use the same pattern for a very long time. But I would gather this would not be any later than about 1920. I have two of these, if you've noticed here. This person spent $68.50 as well on each of these. So all told, the person almost spent $140 on us from just these two buttons. They were sent to Italy. Um, Value-wise, we should recoup in profit-wise, after all is said and done, about $108 profit after fees, after everything on these. So these small, little, tiny items, these disposable items like paper and old records are items that make us a lot of money and something I specialize in because of the amount of money that can be made. Now, most people just don't mess with these items. I've talked about this sort of thing for years and we're still able to make top dollar on these small, tiny items that everybody seems to pass up. But anyway, that's what I have for you today. Well, there we have it. Hopefully that gave you some ideas and some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends.